It is the largest turnout of 1,500 horsepower nitro burning motorcycles in years and you've got a front row seat. Come on, let's go. the gateway to the west. We welcome you to St. Louis, Missouri Worldwide Technology Raceway. It is the Midwest Drag Racing Series and we've got one of the biggest top fuel motorcycle turnouts in years. Largely thanks to this man, the newcomer, Micah Fenwick. We always talk about what does it take to get new people in this class. Well, Micah, your very first race and I got to ask you, at age 50, what makes you decide, yeah, I want to race a 1500 horsepower nitro motorcycle? I must be crazy. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this awesome bike. It is truly unique. Yeah, it's an all wine built bike, uh, Simmons machine, uh, made everything out of aluminum. Uh, without them guys, this is uh, this wouldn't be possible. And my crew, and Spectral Oils and all my other sponsors. Yeah. Good luck, rookie. Let's get you right to qualifying. We'll check in with them later on. A lot of you are finding motorcycle drag racing and top fuel drag racing for the first time saying, what are these nitro bikes all about? Well, no one is better to speak on that than defending Man Cup champion from Monster Race Products, Mitch Brown. Mitch, how would you simplify this thing and describe this to the average person? I think there's a lot of people better than me to describe this, but I'll give you my take on it. So we're basically a 1500cc Suzuki GS based engine. What that means is we run the same bore spacing, the pistons how far they are apart, and the same stud pattern as that 1980s Suzuki GS bike. Everything else has been built by me, Sam, Larry, Chris, you know, Ian King, and uh, it's all purpose built. It's a supercharged engine. The cylinder head is on backwards, so the supercharger is on the front. That's why you see the exhaust coming out the back. We run a big primary belt drive like a Harley or a Top Fuel Harley into a clutch that's just like a top fuel car clutch. It has a clutch cannon. The cannon is like a hydraulic cylinder that holds fingers and as we tell the clutch cannon to move at the times and the speed we want, then slowly those clutch arms, which were designed and built by Steve and Larry, uh, start applying pressure to the clutch, just like a top fuel car. Then from there it transfers through the transmission to the opposite side drive where we turn a, a, a 15 inch Mickey Thompson slick. One of the challenges is you can't just call that dot com and order a part. You're making parts. In fact, your cylinder head taking the NHRA Pro Stock Motorcycle World by storm. I take a look at your bike. I notice it doesn't have a monster head. Is that something in the works for you? The four valve head is a little problematic for a nitro bike because um, you have what's called a Siamese port. So you have two uh, valves that are separate, but then they can join, I think is the word, into one port it comes to a knife edge. Well, you see what the nitro does to uh, uh, ink and L valve, well, it'll just melt that aluminum. So guys like Chris, Hannum, and Yaska, what they're doing is two complete separate exhaust ports, which is a great idea and I like it. I am working with Yaska. I mean, you probably saw after my little April Fool's joke, you know, he was at my shop. We're working on several projects together and we are building a new two valve billet head for my bike. Rick Ward's not producing that head anymore and we want to do some different stuff. So uh, I got a lot of great input from some people and it'll be coming soon. You guys are always developing, always learning. One other aspect I got to ask you about that's brand new on your motorcycle that people may not realize. Sometimes on the videos they see me crying. Tears because of the nitro. You got a fresh air system here that enables you to not tear up on the starting line. Tell me about it. Yep, so you know, Sam has had one for years. Uh, I always kind of wanted to do it. When we switched over to that fuel tech ignition, I'm telling you, it's burning more nitro because the fumes have just overcome me ever since we put it on. Most of my runs last year when I left the starting line, my eyes were watering so bad I couldn't even see the tree. As soon as I take off, it clears up. So I decided I've got to finally you know, figure out a way to do it. Got a bottle, put it on the system, ran it yesterday for the first time, and I love it. It helps also, it was so humid last night, you know, my glasses were fogging up. And uh, at Norwalk last year, I was doing this, and Todd Martin's like, what's that sign? And I'm like, that's my glasses are fogging up, and I'm trying to clean them. As soon as that air comes in through the helmet, crystal clear, I can breathe, it's great. So 
a lot to consider, and that includes having clean vision, clean air. Mitch Brown looking for a big win against a tough field. It's one of the greatest turnouts in years, and it is a brand new stop for Top Fuel Motorcycles. We're here with Todd Martin, a busy man. You race Pro Mod, you tune two bikes. How did Top Fuel Motorcycles and the Midwest Drag Racing Series get hooked up? Uh, Keith and I always had a dream of having our own series. He actually was the one that ponied up, and he is the main man. I'm just on the board and advisory of him. Uh, we own Tulsa Raceway Park together, and so I want to give all the credit to Keith because this is what his, his vision was, and all I am here is help support him and make it grow. But you know I love motorcycles. That's where I came from, and uh, helping Mitch and helping Sam. You know, I was like, I can't be everywhere at once. I can't race my car. I can't be where they're at different times. So let's just bring everything together. Let's make the Midwest Drag Racing Series better, and uh, then I can be here. So I parked in between Sam and Mitch. You know, I got them on each side of me. And, uh, it's a lot of work, but man, what's what we come here for is to work and have fun and enjoy and then do the best that we can. So uh, it's been a, a very eventful weekend. This is the second one. You know, we did it in Memphis, but we only made a couple passes there. We're here, we're going rounds and rounds and rounds. So uh, I'm really getting the feel of uh, what it feels like to be one of those uh, tuners that have to like be stretched apart. We're, we're hanging in there and um, everybody's learning more and I'm just excited about all of it. He's a busy man. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity, Todd. And this provides yet another place for Top Fuel Motorcycles to get in front of fans. We know you love it out there in YouTube land, and that's what we aim to do is put it in front of the big crowds. These guys deserve it. Big thanks, Midwest Drag Racing Series. I told you Nitro Racing can be cruel and unforgiving. Let me show you what happened to the veteran Chris Hand right here. A bad MSD Magneto prevented him from getting down the track on Friday. It's pretty rough when you drive from Alabama all the way up here to St. Louis, Missouri, and you can't make it down. But this team never gives up. They were able to rewire it. They believe they fixed the problem. They believe they can race here on Saturday. It is affectionately known as the Yellow Bullet. It's been a 571 on the quarter mile, one of the quickest motorcycles in the world. Here with Dave Vantine, the fearless rider. Call him the quickest rising star in Top Fuel Motorcycle for good reason. Dave, you've been a longtime pro mod racer. How does it compare a nitrous pro mod versus a nitro top fuel bike on the eighth? Uh, the, the, I found the best way I found to compare it is it's it's the same speed uh, and half the distance. In other words, I think I went 203. Uh, in a quarter on the Pro Mod, and we go 203 at the eighth mile now. So uh, that's the best way I can say it. It's it's twice as fast. This weekend, when we cut to eighth mile for for this series, is it uh, something that is a little bit easier for you now that you're used to the big speed on the quarter? Um, I guess so. I mean, you're not you know really struggling with the thing to stop it as much. Obviously, we can take our time a little bit. You usually don't need to parachute. Um, so, and this track is very long, so it's. I actually had to let off the brakes at one point because I, I didn't want to come up short. Well, reaction time is even more important, and Dave Vantine is known as one of the best levers, so that's good news for him today. <laughs> Micah, two passes under your belt, very straight, very smooth. What's your impression so far? Uh, the bike is slow, but you know we're at some good altitude. The air isn't good, but we're going to turn things up, hopefully this next round, and make a good lap, and hope for the best. And you know, this is, uh, I'm just here to have fun and put on a show for everybody. Well, you are putting on a show, and i got to bring something to your attention because the fans at home are loving it. Your confidence, your poise. You had this walk following your motorcycle. You looked like a prime Buzz Lightyear, they said. You were in the zone. Uh, how do you keep your confidence up to do this? Thank my parents for that because <laughs> they gave me the walk. <laughs> Very impressive. We wish you all the best here on race day. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks. A very special race this weekend for the 20-time champion. Spider-Man, you made a lot of noise in the NHRA, national headlines. But it's been since November 2020 that you've actually entered a race. What's it like to be back in competition mode? Oh, it's great to have out there to irritate the rest of the guys. So it's, uh, it's awesome to be back. So, you know, looking forward to this weekend. It's an eighth-mile deal, so it'll, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got great weather now. We've had terrible weather for the last day or two, and... Actually, I got here on Wednesday, and it was hot. You couldn't hardly take it. And then Thursday was hot, and yesterday was super muggy and hot. And, and today we wake up, oh, my God, it's just unbelievable, man. It's like being on a spring day, so it's awesome. With the hardship that you encountered last year with all the health problems that started with a knee replacement, how thankful are you to be back here competing? I know there was a time where you wondered, was your career over? But you're back. Yeah, you know, you always wonder that, you know, especially when, you, you know, I'll be 65 in January, so... 
you're always worried about that for sure. And um, I was definitely worried in, in 2021 about it. Like, it, just, it was just one thing after another after another. And, you know, I got a little issue going on right now, but uh, it's definitely fixable. A uh, little, little pain in the rear end right now to, to uh, you know, deal with it. So it's, um, it's you know, so we just – you know, it's just good to be back. I can still ride. I feel good. You know, I'm, uh, you know, my stomach issues are getting better and better and better. So uh, it's great to be back and be able to, to, to go out and have fun again and, uh, and race. And, um, you know, it's great to be here in St. Louis. I hadn't been here since 2005 uh, with ProStar. So it's great to be back here. The track is awesome. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful facility, as you can see. And I'm sure the viewers have seen how nice this facility is. So. And Nettie, one of the – you used to run the, uh, our lanes at ProStar. He actually is the, the manager here at the drag strip. So it's, it was great to see her and talk to her. And uh, it's just definitely great to be back in competition for sure. Now, it's a funny side story here. We know it's so competitive out here. Your colleagues actually made you take the number one off the motorcycle because you're in activity. You countered by putting a 21 on there, which represents 20 championships and one with Jimmy Brantley. Uh, that's a number that means something, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, uh, you know, the, same, the, the, the sad part about that whole deal there was that uh, there's really no number one over here in, in this sanction right now because they hadn't even finished the first race. So, you know, some people have a number one on their bike, and, you know, I've had mine for many, many years. So it, it's, uh, it, it was a little disheartening, but, you know, if that makes other guys happy, then, then it makes me happy. I'm all good with it. Well, if I know you at all, I think you're dead set on getting that number one back. What do you think? There's no question. Uh, I'm going after it, and uh, he needs to get eight motors. <laughs> He's the quickest and fastest in the world, Larry Spider-Man McBride, looking to continue his championship reign, this time here in the Midwest Drag Racing Series. Was that a great race or what? I hope you guys enjoyed a different perspective. We upped the production value a little bit. I see you in the comments. We're trying. We're working. We're growing. It's because of you. I want to thank Dan Ford. I want to thank Kibble White. I want to thank Behringer Brakes. I want to thank the Midwest Drag Racing Series. And guys, if you like that video, here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle. And you know if there's anything fast motorcycles, especially Nitro, we're in. Cycle Drag rolls on. Yeah.